And, uh, and of course, what I'd like to see is, is uh, people pre-pressurize uh, all the time. Uh, pre-pressurize, pressurize on the surface and continue to pre-pressurize until you get to the bottom. When you're at the bottom on a dive, that's when you equalize, that's when you move your jaw around and let that extra pressure come out. If you're looking for information and you'd like to know more about uh, the uh, diver's ear, there's an article on my website and uh, I've, I've uh, uh, posted it here. I'm with the University of Washington, as you knew from our opening comments, and uh, on the website is this uh, article which uh, you can use to teach techniques to other people. If any of you were dive masters here, I would encourage you to uh, take these methods with you and, uh, and to spread the word about uh, middle ear pressurization. Uh, before we begin the feedback session, I wanted to show you a, uh, a bit of, uh, of uh, m a bit more of middle ear anatomy. And, uh, and so what I'm going to do now is switch back to live video and, uh, and use the, uh, the scope to, uh, to demonstrate the Frenzel maneuver. Now, uh, my eardrum doesn't look like my daughter's. It doesn't look quite as clear. And that's what happens when you get to be 50. You know, you get, <laughs> your, your eardrum gets a bit foggy. But um, there's nothing wrong with that eardrum. Works just fine. Here it goes. You see that, that um, this membrane on the top here is the pars flaccida. It's not supported by quite as much uh, structural tissue as the pars tensa is, and so you'll see much more movement in the top of, of the uh, uh, tympanic membrane. If I switch over to the other side, you can see where um, uh, we have a, a bit of, uh, of ear canal trauma. You see that? that Right there, that's what happens when you use a Q-tip on your ears. You see a little red spot developing. And, uh, and again, we'll go through uh, pressurization. And so you can uh, get quite a bit of control there. Uh, now what I'd like to do is get some more real-time uh, cases. Any other divers in here who would like to take a look at their ears? OK, please. Uh, come up one at a time. Now, this is an interesting part of the, uh, of the program because you never know what you're going to get. Come on up. I always have problems clearing my right ear and on a dive a while ago, I think I did exactly what you said not to do with when you're 10 feet down off the blow and I felt a big shift. And since then, I have that, what you were saying earlier about air coming out your eye. The retrograde so flow is that, air is that through your eyes. Uh -huh. not a, that's not a bad thing. Uh -huh. OK. Well, let's take a look. Now, uh, be sure to tell me if, um, if I hurt you here now. OK. okay. We you never know what you're going to see. And so here, what we have is a normal uh, amount of wax. You see a little bit of this uh, of uh, normal canal uh, accumulations here, sometimes more, sometimes less. But this is the malleus. And the, the lateral process, uh, the eardrum is all this tissue here. And uh, now, why don't you uh, plug your nose and inflate your middle ear? OK. Well, gee, did, did that sound clear and crisp to you? It's kind of crunchy. Kind of crunchy, OK. Well, I don't really see any fluid to build up behind the middle ear. There is no, uh, there is no, uh, blood accumulations along the uh, uh, malleus. And, uh, and so uh, whatever happened before uh, seems like a, a relatively minor problem. I'm glad that didn't injure yourself severely. Now, you don't seem to have too much trouble okay. moving air in and out of your ears. No, but you, I'm usually OK with it, but if I, was, I think I was stuffy that day. You were I stuffy, stuffy that, that day. day. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's pass the baton. Um, I'm getting nausea. 
I've had, uh, well, in two uh, recent experiences, I've come up uh, spitting blood and bleeding through the nose, and I'm feeling water getting in my left ear, and I'm getting nauseous on every dive, like down at 35 feet, all of a sudden getting nauseous and vomiting as soon as I get up to the surface. My goodness, that uh, takes some of the enjoyment away from, uh, <laughs> from a dive. When, when, uh, when you're in a wreck and you have to throw up at 35 feet, it's like the British say, it's a okay. bit of a well, sticky wicket. Um, you you would, would be surprised how many people uh, have these ongoing problems, and these are treatable problems. Remember now, 99%, 95%, something like that, of people have uh, problems that can be corrected by just perfection of their technique. So uh, be sure and tell me if I hurt you now, okay? Now we will see some wax in some of these ears, and that's normal. Uh, again, yeah, that, that wax is a normal accumulation, and so uh, some, some people have a bit more than others. It depends on how much hair is in the external canal. Uh, Mother Nature put that wax there to protect your ears from moisture, so, um, so again, don't be afraid of wax. Now, here's, a, uh, here's your eardrum, and uh, why don't you, uh, it's a little foggy, so let me wipe uh, the, uh, let me just warm up this. Uh, I, I, I clean my ears every morning. Uh-huh. Okay, that's a little more clear. And uh, so go ahead and pressurize your middle ear for me now. Let's just see what happens. And you, uh, there you go. Okay. Now, was that easy to do or was that hard? Hard. Okay. How, let me see how hard you were blowing. Okay. Now, in your case, what, what I want you to do is I want you to put your fingers on my nose now. Go ahead and Okay, yep. I'm blowing a little harder than you are, yep. right? Yep. Now, um, so let's watch the schnoz is the way we do this, okay? Now, uh, now I'm going to have you blow a little harder for me, just like I was. There you go. See, now, that's just, that's the difference between getting a, a, a more forceful pressurization. Was that uncomfortable for you to do? No. Okay. How about your other ear? Is it, uh, is it okay, too? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I think we ought to give you the bazooka to take home so you can practice. <laughs> okay, um, on to the next. And why don't you tell me a little bit about your ears and, and uh, why uh, you've had a problem. Well, equalization is challenging for me, but I can always get it, usually the first 30, 40 feet. But, um, my problem are the next few days, I just feel, it's, I call it like my ear hangover, diving hangover. My ears just feel stuffy and stuffy, right. and, it, and they, they pop, and after three or four days, I'm usually back to what I, back to normal. But. Well, you know, that's an interesting sensation, and, and uh, the reason it's there is because when you squeeze the tissues of your middle ear, that causes a, a bogginess to uh, 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 occur in the mucous membrane. The mucous membrane is a, a little bit edematous, or edema is the word doctors use for being swollen. So the, the tissues of the middle ear become swollen. They leak a little fluid. This is that uh, blister fluid or exudate that doctors refer to. And sometimes that fluid will sit there in the eustachian tube and in the middle ear and it'll crackle for a couple of days after a dive. That, that's, that means, that's the signal that you've been um, uh, squeezing your ears during the dive. Now we have to try to figure out why that's happening to you. I'm gonna warm up this tip again because it, uh, it fogs up on me and, and uh, that's what this bath is all about. <clears throat> okay, taking a look, external canal, a normal amount of wax. Now, the eardrum here looks a little different. This little shaggy stuff here is probably just some wax that's pasted on the eardrum. Um, it, isn't, it isn't dangerous, but it's harder to see your uh, malleus. It doesn't look as uh, crystal clear as the, others, as the others have. Why don't you try pressurizing for me?